Hey there, enjoyers. Hope you're doing really well today. Well, here we are. We are in church. That's right. You may be in your lounge room. You may be in your family room. Who knows? You may even be in bed, in your pajamas, eating your cornflakes this morning. But wherever you are, I want to encourage you to lean in. Hopefully, you've already enjoyed some great praise and worship. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to take you on a bit of a journey and uh, we're going to talk. You know, one of the things I love is after I preach sometimes and meet people first time in church and they'll say, great talk. And whenever I hear that, I love it because at the end of the day, that's what they've heard. They've heard a talk. And so we're just going to talk. We're going to talk like, like a pastor would talk to his church, like a father would talk to his children. We're just going to talk about a whole range of things. But before we go there, let's just go through the foyer. So for those of you who have never been to our West location, this is our foyer here. This is obviously the reception. Usually we would have we would have Emily Forward sitting here or Lana Banana or someone like that answering the phone. Hello, you've grown Enjoy Church or something like that. And so that's that's the reception through here. We have the events and we have all the creative spaces through there. We have our business and Pastor Louise over here. Our business is in here. But we're going to go upstairs today. I'm going to take you into my office. Some of you have never been into our office or my office. So this is my office and some of you are like, office? It looks like a, <clears throat> looks like a little man cave. And at the end of the day, that's what it is. As we look around, obviously we can see the, uh, the Richmond uh, team of the century over here. We've got a stack of cars. As we go along, we've got, we've got some of this team here. Um, uh, we're in Chapel Street there uh, with Rancy and Vlosten there. Obviously we're off to Hawaii here. We've got my friends in Hawaii. You know, I, I love Mike and Evan and we've got Roger Archer down from uh, Puyallup there. We had a great time. Uh, here we've got Jack Rewald. You know Jack. If you're a football player or a fan, you know Jack Rewald. As in, I've met him a number of times on the golf course. I keep I keep jumping on Instagram saying, Jack, when are we going to get together for coffee? But he must be really busy because he's not returning my, my messages. But anyway, here's Jimmy Barnes, uh, myself and Jimmy Barnes at the airport. Uh, I thought we were going on tour, but no, he was actually just picking up his bags, but whatever. This is my dad. For those of you who don't know, this is my dad. I went, there was a Christmas a number of years ago. I said to Georgia girl, I said, hey, babe, you want to go for a drive? Let's take a couple of days off, go for a drive. And then she then she goes, where are we? And I said, we're in Adelaide. And so long story short, we bought a car. Dad came and picked it up for me. This is one of my uncles, bit of a crazy uncle. Uh, this is this is Frank. Some of you don't know. You all, everyone wants to know, what's the go with the nutcracker? It's not a nutcracker. His name is Frank. Here's the, here's the deal. This is why Frank is here. Frank's got my back. This is where I sit all day, every week. Frank, Frank's got my back. Frank hears every conversation, but never repeats a word, but he's always got my back. Praise God for the Franks of Enjoy Church, because I got to tell you, we've got lots of them. You got my back, we got your back. Praise God, it's good to feel safe, isn't it? Then you got this little guy, everyone who, know, everyone who knows football knows who he is, Mr. Cochin. And uh, here we have uh, Pastor Mick's old car. That's where it spent most of its time, on the back of a, tra <laughs> on the back of a truck. Sorry, Mick. Mick's getting a good mention today, isn't he? And so then we go on from there. And so here, here, here we are all the way through to my desk. So how many of you are ready for the word now? Let's lean in. You've seen my office. You've seen where I hang out occasionally. Truth is, I don't spend a lot of time here because I'd rather be out wherever you are. But we're here today. Let's get into the word of God. Now, as I've already said, today is going to be a little bit different. My, my desire isn't really to come and preach the Word of God to you, but really just share what's on my heart. I want to speak to you today as those that we love, we care for, and we are believing for the very, very best for. Now, most of you know that once upon a time, I was a carpenter. That's right, like our Lord and Savior. The first time that I read Jesus say, I will build my church, I have to tell you, He had me right there. He had me. I didn't need an explanation. I didn't need the Greek or the Hebrew translation for building and the concepts of building had been part of my life for, for many, many years. They were, they, they were my bread and butter for years. And so as a result, when, when he's talking building, I get building. In Matthew chapter 16, Peter has this revelation that Jesus is the Christ. And then in Matthew chapter 16 from verse 17, Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. So Jesus' commitment is to build his church. And brothers and sisters, he builds his church upon men and women who carry a revelation that he is the Christ, that he is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was and is and is to come. He is the Lamb of God who came specifically to take away the sins of the world. 
And as we've read, Jesus is committed, committed, absolutely committed above everything else to building his church. And he's going to build his church on us. And he's going to build his church through us. Now, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, it says there that we are God's fellow workers. That's right. We are God's fellow workers. So God is at work and we are God's fellow workers. It says there, you are God's field. You are God's building. It's interesting, isn't it, that you are his building, but you are also his builders. You're his workers. Therefore, as we build together, all that we build is for the glory of God. I want to encourage you today. Uh, all that you all, all that you are building, all that I am building, all that we are building, it has to be for the glory of God. It's for no other reason. We are building for the glory of God. My life, my marriage, my family, my friendships, my relationships, my finances, etc. It's all for the glory of God. Therefore, it must be built in keeping with a standard and a pattern that brings glory to God. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? All right, let's turn to some scripture here. First Corinthians chapter 3. Lean in now. That's right. I, I can see you all over in Joy World, all over Victoria, leaning in this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, reading together from verse 12. It says here, If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay or straw, his work will be shown for what it is. Because the day, the day, that's right, the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. Now, Jesus puts it this way. Remember today, we're, now we're, we're talking about building. That's where we're stepping into. Jesus said, I will build my church. Let's talk about building, building our lives and building his church. Jesus puts it this way in Matthew chapter 7, reading together from verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who, who, who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. So, because we're in lockdown, we all know, here we are today, we are in lockdown in Victoria, we've all slowed down, even if it's just for a day or for an, uh, a few days that are to come. This is what I want to say, considering we have slowed down, why don't we give some consideration now to the way we've built and the way that we're building? Because the reality is, if you're, if you're up and about, if you're alive and well, if you're, if, if you're going to come out of lockdown and continue to live life, you're building. Whether you like it or not, whether you realize it or not, you're building. So we want to be people who give consideration to what we have built and also consideration to what we're going to build in the future. As someone who has now been in full-time ministry for the past 25 years or so, I, I, I've seen some things, or we've all seen some things, but I've got to tell you, in 25 years of ministry, as you'd be aware, I've seen some things and I've seen some patterns and, and I've seen God's Word be proven true over and over and over again. Friends, when Scripture says God's Word doesn't return to Him void, it's the absolute truth. I can promise you, uh, yeah, there's not too much I can promise you, but I can promise you this, the Word of God will return to Him and be proven true. It won't return to Him void. It's going gonna, it's gonna to accomplish that which it is sent out to do. When it says that what we build uh, will be tested by fire, I can promise you, yes, it's true. It's going to be tested by fire. Yes, on the day that's going to happen. There's no doubt about that. The day that the Lord returns. Uh, the, the, there's no doubt about it. It's going to happen then. But how many of you know it will also happen along the way? It's happening along the way. You, you, uh, if you're not realizing it, it is happening along the way. That's why Matthew chapter 7 from verse 26 says, But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. 
it fell with a great crash because uh, um, there will be days in life when the storms will test us. That's what happened to that, this man in this passage of Scripture, but, or this person in this passage of Scripture. But it will happen to all of us if, if we don't listen to the Word of God. It's one thing to hear the Word of God. That's why the Bible says to us so clearly, don't just be hearers, but be doers. Because if you do, when the storms of life come, you're going to stand. If you hear, but don't do, when the storms of life come, you're not going to stand. All right, but here's the thing. If what we've built stands strong, It's only going to stand strong because we've built upon Christ the rock with the right materials. Not only if we if we build upon Christ the rock with the right materials, is it going to stand for us? But here's a great thing. We will become, you will become, you and your marriage, you and your family, you and that which is important to you will become a lighthouse of hope for others as we shine forth the glory of God. Now, as I read it, as I read it, I'm just saying, here we are. We're all building with, with one of the, the following six, gold, uh, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw. The fire and the storms will test the quality of each person's work. Now, you can't avoid it. Church, can I encourage you today? You can't avoid it. I know you may want to avoid it, uh, but you can't avoid it. Uh, now, if that's a reality, I'm thinking, as I state the obvious today, that, that most of us here, as we look to build our lives upon Christ the rock, we want to build with gold, silver, and precious stones. All right. Gold, silver, precious stones. Jesus is our foundation. He is the rock of our, our, of our salvation. He is our foundation. We want to build lives upon him. So, so what verses can we turn to today? What parables did Jesus speak? What lessons are repeated through scripture from Genesis to Revelation that we could pull out today? And I was thinking about this in the context of, of what we're going to speak today and what we're wanting to do today. And I thought to myself, well, we can go this way, we can go that way. But then I thought to myself, you know what would be cool? As we talk about building, I'm sitting in an office now, uh, obviously at Enjoy Church, West location. Enjoy Church, we've been here now 22 and a half years years. Uh, when we got here, there was 40 people. Now, I think uh, connected to the life of Enjoy, there's over 8,000 people and we're in 16 different locations and God's doing incredible things. We're, we're, we're seeing God build His church. He said, I will build my church. We get to co-labor with Him. We're seeing, we're seeing God at work. We've seen thousands and thousands and thousands come to the knowledge of Christ. We're, we're, we're raising disciples. We're sending them out all over the world. God is doing amazing things. And so I thought to myself, you know what would be cool as in I can, I can talk about so many different things today as far as what would be gold, uh, silver or precious stones. But, but this is what I thought I'd do. I thought I'd just lean in to the enjoy cultural statements. Now, if you've done our grow track recently, you would know what they are. If you haven't done our grow track recently, you would have heard these things. If you've been part of enjoy for any length of time, I'm sure you've heard these things. But I want to remind you today because the reality is this. Fire is going to come. Storms are going to come. Uh, but, but if you will build with gold, silver, and precious stones, if you will build according to the Word of God, the pattern that's in the Word, then you are going to stand, my friends. You are going to stand. We, we've seen fire and we've seen rain. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. Anyway, we won't go there. But, but we've seen it all. But you know what I've also seen? I've seen the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. And I'm praying for you and your family, wherever you find yourself today, I am praying that the glory of God would be seen in your life, just as we've seen it across the life of Enjoy for over two decades now. I pray that we would see it in your life. So here we go. Let's look at some of the cultural statements. And the cultural statements are really a reflection of the gold, the silver, the precious stones. And you'll see that really all of our cultural statements come from scripture. Here we go. Point number one, first cultural statement. Here we go. For I commend the enjoyment of life. Praise God right there. Just lean in and smell the roses. Brothers and sisters, understand this. The heart of God is that you would enjoy life. You would enjoy life. And it's like, it's like it's, it's, we get asked all the time, where does the name enjoy come from? Because a lot of people used to endure church. Now they come to enjoy church. And it's like, we love this name. We enjoy church. We enjoy the family of God. We're enjoying worship. We're enjoying it all. Where does it come from? Ecclesiastes 8.15 says here, So I commend the enjoyment of life, because nothing is better for a man under the sun than to eat and drink and be glad. And everybody said together, 
Amen. You know it's true. You want to enjoy life. I know you want to enjoy life. Every human wants to enjoy life. You know, the ABCs, they, they will help you enjoy life because when you're abiding, when you're in church, when you belong to a friendship group, when you're contributing, these, these are all things that will help you enjoy life. I actually believe that God wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to enjoy your marriage. He wants you to enjoy your family. He wants you to enjoy it all. He wants you to enjoy the friendships and the ministry and the calling of God that's upon you to do something great for the kingdom of God. Here we go. Point number two, a second cultural statement is simply this. How awesome is this place? That's right. Some of you are saying it on your couch right now. How awesome is this place? You know, today, if I can be honest with you, the office isn't that awesome. And the reason it's not that awesome is because there's not a lot of enjoyers here. Uh, but, but the thing that makes any space awesome is the people of God, the enjoyers. I'm going to tell you, enjoyers, we love you to bits. We love you to bits. How awesome is this place? How awesome is Enjoy Church? All right, let's go to Scripture now. Genesis 28 from verse 16 says, When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. Have you ever been in a, in a season of church life where you're going through the motions, but you forget that God is in the house? I want to encourage you. Can I encourage you? Because like, if if we're going to enjoy life, we need to realize that God is in the house. Here we have Jacob. He's he's waking up and he's realizing, man, I wasn't even aware. God is present. God is here. It says here in verse 17, he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And that's what that's what makes church awesome. It really is the gate of heaven. The people of God are dwelling. The angels of God are ascending and descending. The Holy Spirit fills the atmosphere. The Lord is, stands above it all. If you know the passage, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Friends, I want to encourage you today. Enjoy church just isn't a church. No, no, no. It's an awesome place. And what, what makes it awesome is you, the Spirit of God in you, the joy of the Lord in you, the vision, the, the calling what God has put upon your life when we come together and we we surround ourselves in an atmosphere of faith and an atmosphere of the kingdom of heaven. I got to tell you, it's the most wonderful place on earth. How awesome is this place? You guys are unbelievable. Here we go. Point number three. Here we go. We're talking about our cultural statements. Jesus said, I will build my church. Now, we're not going to we're not going to unpack that one because we're unpacking it throughout the whole whole message today. So, we'll leave that one for now. What about point number 4? Cultural statement number 4. Here we go. No one stands alone. All right, why don't we do it together? You can do it from your couch, your bed, your kitchen, wherever you find yourself today. Uh, don't forget enjoy us at enjoy church. Everyone say it together now. No one stands alone. That's right. No one stands alone. I actually think one of the reasons uh, my life is full because this no one stands alone, it, it, it's, it's not something for me that is like a catchphrase. I never want no one stands alone to be a catchphrase. Brothers and sisters, can I encourage you today? Don't let it be a catchphrase. I go to this church, they say this. No, no, no. Let it be, let it be your life message. Let it be your life message. Always have more room in your life for others. So it, you know, most of us have circles. We have a circle of friends. We have a family circle. We have friendship group circles. Always make sure there's room for someone else in your circle. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 9, it says here, Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? And his response is simply, I don't know. <laughs> Am I my brother's keeper? And it's like, oh man, that's the wrong question. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, Cain, you're meant to be your brother's keeper. You are your brother's keeper. Brothers and sisters, can I encourage you? Enjoy us. Can I encourage you? As in, uh, every now and again, every now and again, I haven't actually, I haven't heard this for a long time, but I have heard people say in the past, oh, you know, people aren't friendly. And I'm like, are you for real? People aren't friendly. If you want to have friends, be friendly. That's what Proverbs says. If you want to have friends, you've got to be friendly. I want to encourage you, be the one, be the person, be the one that is always looking for the person who may be standing alone and invite them into your circle. I thank God that that when I came to Christ, others opened up circles for me to come into, others opened up their friendship group, others opened up their circle of friends. I want to encourage you, let's make sure it enjoy church. No one stands alone. It's like, I, I, I can promise you this, if you will have a heart for others, you're going to see the heart of God poured out upon your life. As in, I'm just trying to help you here, right? As in, I'm not trying to motivate you to do it. I can promise you, as a, this, is, this is my life. 
This is the reality of my life. You know, you've heard me say it many times before, I'll never be the wealthiest man in the world, but I'm already the richest. And the reason I'm the richest is simply because of the friends and the people I have in my life. But here's the thing, I've had to open myself up and go out and, and bring people into my life. It doesn't just happen. Let's be looking for those that are standing alone, bring them alongside, let's go journey together. Praise God. And the fifth cultural statement in Joy Church is simply, my heart is my responsibility. Now, if you're part of our leadership, you would have heard me say, don't, don't be making uh, your heart my responsibility. I won't make my heart your responsibility. Brothers and sisters, can I encourage you? The heart is so important to everything that is going to happen in your life in Christ. It, you, we cannot avoid it. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. It's not just a wellspring, but it's actually the wellspring of life. And that's why, that's why the scripture is so clear. Above all else, guard your heart. Guard your heart. I can't guard your heart. Your wife can't guard your heart. No one else can guard your heart. Only you can guard your heart. I want to encourage you, make sure that you, that you guard it. Other translations say other things. Some translations will say, tend your heart, uh, watch over your heart, uh, keep your heart. They're, they're all the different translations, they all, they all reveal something different, don't they? Like uh, keeping is like a gardener that would keep, it's like a gardener would keep his front lawn. He's going to keep the weeds out, watch over. It's like you, you gotta, you gotta watch over your heart. You don't want anything coming into your heart. Can I encourage you? It is your heart. Don't let the wrong things come into your heart. People will say stuff to you. People will speak stuff to you. And multimedia these days is, is like social media, multimedia, as in all the different media platforms, they, they're all looking to put things into your heart. I'm saying, no, thank you very much. I don't need you. And I don't need that language and, and that, the, the, that conversation to be dwelling in my heart. I'm choosing to keep it as a well of life, a wellspring of life from which the, from which the good things of God are going to flow. They're going to bubble up. Uh, eternal life is going to bubble up. Joy is going to bubble up. Peace is going to bubble up. So what am I going to do? I'm going to watch my heart. Enjoy this. Watch your heart. Point number six now. Here we go. We're talking about our cultural values that enjoy church. Purpose over preference. All right. Purpose over preference. What does that mean? As I like purpose over preference. We get asked all the time about, about different parts of church life. Why do we do this? And why do we do that? Why don't we do this? And why don't we do that? At the end of the day, we, we all have preferences. You have your preferences. I have my preferences. You know, if, if it was up to me, maybe I'd, I'd have more of Jimmy Barnes praise on a Sunday morning and, or a bit of cold chisel worship. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I just like that sound. But how many of you know, it's not about our preferences. As in, don't get me wrong, I love and enjoy worship. But you know what I'm saying? As in, we all have preferences in different spaces. We'll lean this way, lean that way. I like this, you like that. But it's not about our preferences. As the body of Christ and, and a temple is being built for the glory of God, it's actually about our purpose. Now, in 2 Timothy, this is Paul writing to this young minister, and he says, this is what he says. He says, he says to Timothy, and he's trying to get Timothy, the pastor, to work it out. And as a pastor, I'm trying to get you to work it out. And so here, here we go. This is what he says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. I am willing to endure anything, absolutely anything, if, if, if we're going to worship this style, if we're going to have it at this volume, if we're going to use this type of coffee, if we're going to be uh, out preaching on the street, if we're going to go to Cambodia, Osaka, whatever the case may be, I will endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus to those God has chosen. What are you willing to endure for the glory of God? What are you willing to endure that those who God is choosing might come to the knowledge of Christ? I hope that you're willing to lay down your life and endure anything that is required. Point number seven. Here we go now. Do something. Do something. I, I, I like this. You see it in all of our locations across all of our doors as you leave the auditoriums or, or you leave the foyers. You will see in big letters, do something. Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, 
but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. That's right, a servant being made in human likeness. Do something. We are servants of the Most High God. You know, you know at the end of the day, I know, I know how people view Georgie and myself as, as senior pastors, whatever senior pastors mean. I think it's got to do with age more than anything these days, but whatever. At the end of the day, how many of you know to be a, a senior pastor really all that means is senior servant? That's it. That's it. Senior servant. We're here to serve you. We're actually all here to serve one another in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible teaches us. But we're also here to serve a lost and dying and hurting humanity. There are are people in our streets. There are people out out there in our communities, in our suburbs. Wherever we go, there are people. Can I encourage you and remind you, we're called to do something. We're called to serve. I want to encourage you again. if If you're not serving in the life of the church, if you're not in a team or on a roster, can I encourage you? Reach out to your location pastor today. Say, how do I get myself onto a team and onto a roster? Because I want to do something. And then we come to point number eight, which is our final cultural uh, statement here. It simply says here, love God, love people. Love God, love people. How many of you know that's it in a simplest form? That's it right there. Just love God and love people. You say, do something. What should I do? Love God. And love people. Actually, get up and, and put into practice all that you're hearing. In Matthew chapter 22, from verse 37, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Now, that, that is so, that is so, man, that, if that doesn't mess with your head, because I know that you know as well as I do, there are a lot of people, we're good to love God. We want to love God. But, but, but this next part, which is as equally important, is simply this, love your neighbor as yourself. Who is your neighbor? Your neighbor is the person that's beside you. Uh, the, the neighbor this morning uh, across all of Enjoy Church would begin with those in your home. It would begin with your next door neighbors. It would begin with those that you're doing life with. Who are you doing life with? Who are you doing life closely with? Whether they be Christian or, or non-Christian, you got to love the Lord your God. That's the first and greatest commandment, but the next is like it. And it's equally important. You've got to love your neighbor as yourself. Church, at the end of the day, here's my desire. I have one desire. And that is to present, if you call yourself an enjoyer, you want to become an enjoyer, I have one desire. And that is to present you before Christ without spot or wrinkle. Uh, If I can do that, that'll mean that you've been proven through the fire and stood firm through the storms. And so that would tell me that you've been building over the years with gold, silver, precious stones upon the word, uh, upon, upon Christ, the rock. And if you've been building with that upon Christ, then you are going to stand. I want you to stand. I need you to stand. It's like, Jesus, help us all that we would stand, that we would build something that really does reveal your glory. You know, in First Peter, as we c- conclude today, in First Peter chapter 1 from verse 6, it says here, it says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. You know, what, what we're a part of is the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, Jesus is our King. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. And, and as, as, I, as I'm beamed out today across, across the globe, but particularly today into your lounge room, into your family room, wherever you're at today, uh, I, I want to remind you that life is long and life is short. And what you are building at some point in time, the refiner's fire is going to come through it. If what you, if what you are building with survives because you've been building with gold and uh, silver and precious stones. If it survives, you're going to receive your reward. Well, when the storms of life come, if you've been building upon the rock, putting the words of Jesus into practice, then when those storms come, then you're going to stand. There's no doubt about it. Brothers and sisters, as we are in lockdown for a week or so now, can I encourage you? Can I, can I encourage you? Consider how are you building? How are you building? Because when that day comes, I promise you, there's nothing I want more than to be able to present you before the Lord with, without spot, without wrinkle. 
I want to know. I want to know all that I've done all that I can to present you before the Lord. So I want to encourage you, be a Bible person. Be a person who doesn't just hear the word of God, but then goes about and puts it into practice. I'm going to pray for you now, if that's okay. Father, I pray. Lord, I pray for every brother. I pray for every sister. I pray as we would go to work and put your word into practice. I pray that we would see your glory. I pray that we would see your kingdom come. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that we would build lives that really reflect the glory of God. I pray that we would build lives and we would build marriages and we would build families, Lord God. I pray that all that we build for you would reveal your glory and would become a beacon of hope For those who are without hope, Lord God, maybe we become a lighthouse of salvation to this generation simply because we've chosen, Lord, to honour you and honour your word in our life and put it into practice. So this day, Lord, I give you praise. Uh, Lord, uh, Lord, uh, we're believing and we're hoping, Lord, we're just in lockdown for one week. But if it takes more, it takes more. But Lord, I hope we'll be, be together real soon in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said together, Amen and amen. Hey, enjoy this. Can I encourage you? Here's the thing. If you're if in this week yeah, you, you're needing someone to talk to, can I encourage you? Reach out to your location pastors. Can I encourage you? Reach out to your friendship group leaders. Even though we're in isolation, you don't need to be isolated. I want to encourage you, lean into all the different spaces, lean into all the different places, and let's together stand together. You know, as well as I do, we are better together. So let's keep leaning in, leaning into each other. We'll come through this in no time and we'll be back in the house of God, worshiping God. Hey, here's the thing. Maybe you're watching online today. You've never given your heart to Christ. You're hearing what I'm talking about. You, you, and you're hearing those cultural points and you're like, man, I, I would love to be part of that. I would love to be part. You can be part of that. Friends, I want to encourage you in all that I've been talking about. It's all about Jesus, 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 Jesus. And enjoy church. <laughs> we really only have one message and that is simply Jesus. If you've never given your life to Christ, can I encourage you today? Give your life to Jesus. You know, you know John 3.16. Everybody knows John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have eternal life. Therefore, if you've never given your life to Jesus, can I encourage you today, give your life to Christ. When you give your life to Christ in that moment, you can be forgiven of your sin. And let's face it, we've all sinned. You can be forgiven of your sin. You can be you can receive salvation. You know, there's a couple of, there's, there's a word, it's called justification. And it's like, it's a Christian word. And it's a big word. And it's like, what does that mean? It simply means this, just as if I've never sinned. Just just remember that. Justification, that's just as if I've never sinned. When, when, when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are forgiven of your sin. You are justified just as if you've never sinned. I promise you, the weight of sin, the heaviness of sin will be gone from you instantly and you'll come alive in Christ. In an instant, you can know that you're a child of God and you, and you can begin to live a brand new life in Christ and in the family of God, which we will accept you into. So here's the thing. If you're out there today and you're saying, Shane, today's the day I want to give my life to Christ. That's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you're watching on our online platform, on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, there's a little hand that says, I want to give my life to Jesus. Just hit that little hand. Maybe you're watching on one of our Facebook platforms. Just write in there today, I want to give my life to Jesus. Just type it in right now. Someone's going to pick it up. And so for all of you that are, that are hitting that hand right now or writing in that little, uh, little uh, bar down the bottom, I want to give my life to Jesus, we're going to pray a really simple prayer. So enjoy us. Why don't we all pray together? And if you're praying this for the first time, pray it with all your heart. And then you're coming into the family of God right now. You'll, you'll know instantly that you've been made a child of God. Your sins are forgiven and you're on your way to heaven in Jesus' name. All right, let's pray together. Dear Jesus, I thank you today for bringing me to this place that I might give my life to you. Today, Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my all. I ask you, Jesus, forgive me of my sin and help me, Lord, to live a life that is both pleasing and honouring of you. So today, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my all. And I believe from this day on that I'm a child of God. You are my God. You are my Lord. You are my Saviour. And you are my friend. And I'll never be alone again in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said together, Amen and Amen. God bless you and joy as wherever you may be today. 
God bless you. Let's keep leaning in. Let's support each other over the next week. We'll see you real, real soon. God bless and bye for now.